welcome back to my channel. So today is the start of my Smutathon vlog. It is almost midnight when Smutathon is starting, but I wanted to choose my very first book and try to read something or start something before I go to bed tonight. To give you a quick rundown about my game plan for Smutathon. If you didn't know, there was a TBR wheel and I decided to choose a book for every single spot on the wheel and throughout this weekend I'm going to be spinning that wheel and whatever category it lands on that's the book that I'm gonna read so I don't know how many books I'm gonna read I don't know if I'm gonna read three I don't know if I'm gonna read all of them I'm gonna do my best to read as many as I can to give you guys a quick reminder here are all of the books on my TBR, all 16. So these will be the books that I am choosing from based on how I spin. So let me pull up the wheel and we will get to choosing our first book. All right, so I'm gonna spin it. What's it gonna be? All right, I picked Forced Proximity. Let me refer to my TBR list. I forget what book is for that. Forced Proximity is eight by Rilzy Adams. Oh my god, perfect. This is only 50 pages. From my memory, this is a really quick novella about a woman who hires a private chef and then her and the private chef have a thing. I don't really know if this fits for this challenge at all, but since I make the rules, I'm not calling myself out on it. Here's the book. I'm going to start reading it right now and hopefully it doesn't take me very long. Like I said, it is only 50 pages. So I can read this and then let you guys know what I think and then we can go to bed. Alright, so I finished reading eight and this was like the perfect book to start Smutathon with because it was super short super steamy like Rilzy Adams is just top tier smut like her steamy scenes are so good like I said this is about a woman who uh like was celebrating so she hired a private chef to come cook for her and her best friend but her best friend ends up canceling so she's there alone with this private chef who basically in my head he looked like Winston Duke but he was a chef, so just amazing. And yeah, I really liked it. I've read like four or five books by Rosie Adams and she's honestly just like so great at steamy scenes. Like if you're looking for books that are quicker, I read this in 20 minutes. <laughs> it did not take me long at all, but it was so good. So yeah, it's still kind of early, so I'm gonna spin the wheel again. If I get something short, I will finish it before I go to sleep. If I get something longer, I'll at least start it tonight. So, oh, <laughs> I had the wheel pulled up on my phone, but apparently I, I forgot I was Googling pictures of Winston Duke. <laughs> He's just so attractive. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Okay, I don't even need to look up which one this is. So I got non-contemporary. This is His Beauty by Jack Harbin. And I am so excited for this. It is basically a Beauty and the Beast retelling except for the Beast stays a beast, which just sounds really great. I am always on the hunt for monster romances because I feel like there's not that many like actual monster romances and there should be more. And I'm hoping that this is really good. Everyone that I know who's read this has loved it and has said that I'm really gonna love it. And I already really like Jack Harbin, so. Okay, I'm gonna start this. I don't know how long it is, so I don't know. I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna see how it goes, and then decide if I'm gonna go to bed before I finish it. <laughs> Last night I started His Beauty by Jack Harbin. Oh my god, you guys. I am halfway through it and I wanted to stay up 
all night reading it but I knew that I needed to get sleep so halfway through I stopped and I went to sleep but I'm so excited to keep reading this I am already in love with it like I knew that I would be because I really like Jack Harbin's writing but this story just is doing things for me so like I said it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's very like close Beauty and the Beast retelling. Like it hits all of the same beats as the original story. So like it's about a girl and her father breaks into the castle where the beast lives and tries to steal stuff. And so he gets taken prisoner and she ends up going and offering up herself in his place. And where I stopped is the scene right after she like tries to leave and then is attacked by wolves and the beast comes to save her. Oh my god. I just love it. It's so good. It's just everything that I wanted. So I am gonna go finish that. It probably won't take me very long. But so far, if it's going, like if it continues to be as good as it already is, I feel like I'm gonna give it five stars. Alright, I'm gonna go finish it and then I'll come back. Yeah, I'm giving it five stars. That was so good. Like the second half was even better than the first half, especially there was like a lot of action. And if you're familiar like with Beauty and the Beast, you know like everything that's gonna happen, but there was kind of like a little twist or like a reversal in like the final battle that I really enjoyed. It made the, the Beauty character, I think her name is Isla. I don't know how you pronounce her name, but it made her just like, such a badass and I loved it. So yeah, I am gonna give it five stars. I really enjoyed it. I think this might be, I don't know if it's my favorite thing. It might be my favorite thing from Jack Harbin, but I also just really loved Meet Cute Club as well for different, totally different reasons. Like it's, it's totally different than the other stuff I've read from Jack Harbin. So like, I don't even know if comparing them is fair, but I loved it. Moving along, I'm gonna pick my next book. So let's spin the wheel. new to you author okay so i believe the book that i picked for new to you author was naughty boss by whitney g which i'm really excited for what i know about this is basically it is about a boss and his assistant and she is sending these emails to her best friend about how much she hates her boss and how much she wants to quit but that he's like really attractive and she has all these fantasies about him and she ends up accidentally sending one of those emails to her boss <laughs> which already like I'm cringing I'm getting secondhand embarrassment but I feel like it's gonna be really entertaining so i'm gonna go read that i believe i have it on my kindle i think i bought it like a long time ago when it was free okay now you boss was so good i really enjoyed this like i said this is for the new new to me author so i've never read anything by whitney g before but this was good oh my god so far i've enjoyed everything that i've read Somatathon is going so well so far okay so this one was very quick it was like 150 pages but basically it was about the CEO of a I think he was the CEO of a publishing company and his assistant and he is like an asshole and she was writing emails to her best friend about him and accidentally sent one to him about like wanting to quit it kind of reminded me of that movie with um two weeks notice Two Weeks Notice, is that what it's called? With Sandra Bullock and Hugh Grant. It kind of reminded me of like their dynamic, but turned up like a million notches. And I really love that movie. So yeah, I enjoyed this. It was really good. This is like a whole series, I think, of like workplace romances. Like I think there's another one called like Naughty Doctor, which yeah, I'm excited to read. I don't know that I've read many like doctor hospital romances. Yeah, this was really good. There was like a lot of really good banter and dirty talk and like, I don't really know if I would say they had a lot of romantic chemistry, but the sexual chemistry was great. I feel like this could have also been a full length novel and then it would have been easier to explore a romantic connection because it did leave me like wanting a little bit more but for what it was a short like novella I really enjoyed it okay so next this is going so well for those of you who have watched my previous smutathon vlogs there's always one book that is just terrible so I'm like waiting for that book to pop up 
royalty. What did I? I don't even remember what I had for royalty. Let me see what my list was. Oh yeah, The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. Okay, I'm excited for this one. I believe that this is about a princess whose entire like kingdom and family and royal line gets wiped out and she's the only one left. And then like the new barbarian warrior king wants her as his bride. Or like people tell him to kill her so the last of that royal line is gone but instead of killing her, he wants to marry her. Which just sounds great. <laughs> okay, so I finished the King's Spinster Bride. Oh my God, I almost forgot what I was reading because I took a nap. I finished The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon and I really liked it. Oh my God, I am on such a good roll with reading really great things. So yeah, basically this was about a princess. At the very start of the book, her kingdom is being attacked by the cyclone people who is this like group. They're described as like being like very like barbarian-esque and their thing is that like to prove that they're really good warriors, they all cut off, like cut out one of their eyes. So everyone only has one eye. So they're called like cyclones or cyclops. And while her kingdom is being attacked, and her father is murdered, she ends up protecting like the barbarian prince because her people want to kill him like as revenge, but he's just this little boy and so she saves his life. And then we flash forward like 16 years later, he is now king and she's been like hidden away in a monastery for all these years. And his advisors now are telling him, now that you're king, you should kill her because she is the only opposition to your throne. But he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna kill her. I'm gonna marry her. Cause he's pretty much been in love with her since he was a little kid and she saved his life. He has just like had a one track mind, been obsessed with her, been in love with her. And so this had one of my favorite tropes, which is where you have this really like masculine warrior man, but he literally lives for this girl. like. He worships the ground that she walks on, and I love it. It's also an age gap. She is like 10 years older than him. When he tells her that he wants to marry her, she's like shocked because she's like, I'm this old lady. Even though she's only like 33. She thinks that she's too old for him and like he's gonna want somebody younger, but he keeps trying to reassure her that he's literally obsessed with her. And it was so good, I really liked it. Basically like the plot of the book was leading up to them getting married and they had to do this marriage ceremony that's accustomed to his people that is in like three phases and I really liked the marriage ceremony because it's all based around making sure that the woman isn't forced into the marriage. The husband has to go down on his wife to prove <laughs> to prove that he can satisfy her and if he fails to do that then they're not gonna get married. So there's these like three ceremonies that they have to go through essentially all just to get consent from the woman, which I really liked. And yeah, in like typical Ruby Dixon fashion, this was very entertaining. I don't know if this is like a book that's connected to a series or if it's just a standalone. If it's connected to a, ser a series, I'd be very interested in reading the rest because this world was interesting, what little we saw of it. I've read so much today. It's only four o'clock. Like at this rate, I feel like I'm gonna finish my whole TBR. So let's spin the wheel. Forbidden, okay. Um, so the book that I have as Forbidden is The Roommate by Brandy Bush, who is pen name for Katrina Jackson. And I believe that this is about a girl who ends up having a thing with her roommate's parents, which is very interesting. I don't know that I've ever read anything like that. I'm excited, I really like Katrina Jackson. So I'm excited to read from her pen name. I don't know if there is like a difference in her writing from when she writes under Katrina Jackson and when she writes under Brandy Bush, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> So yeah, this actually I didn't know it took place during Christmas So if you're looking for a really quick steamy Christmas romance, this one takes place over Christmas basically the main character her parents 
go to Jamaica for Christmas and like leave her alone. So her college roommate invites her to come home with her for Christmas. So she spends Christmas with her roommate's family and immediately is like very attracted to her roommate's parents. The bedroom that she's staying in shares a wall with the parents. So every night she can hear them like and she's like really unsure if the attraction is mutual because sometimes it seems like they're giving her like suggestive looks but then other times she's like no this is just in my head and it was really good um it was really short it was only like 50 pages but i really enjoyed it and i'm excited to read more from brandy bush i i still don't really know what the difference is between when Katrina Jackson and Brandy Bush. I guess maybe this was like, I don't know, because Katrina Jackson also writes shorter, like, smutty things. I guess, no, I guess um, the Katrina Jackson book that I've read was longer than this. So maybe under Brandy Bush, she just writes, like, really short things. Because this is only 50 pages. I also just realized I have not been giving anything ratings. I gave His Beauty a rating. Honestly, so far, everything has been, like, four stars. I don't know. I struggle to rate smutty novellas especially ones like under 100 pages because it's like it was either good or it wasn't good it either did what it was meant to do or it didn't so like i don't really know what i'm rating of these things but so far i have enjoyed everything so i recommend them all let's do the next spin okay i got fake relationship which means i finally can read the group book so the group book was Tangled Vows by Anna Stone and this is a female-female romance between a very wealthy woman and an escort and they end up getting fake married because the woman has an inheritance from her father that she can't get unless she's married. Her and this escort get married in Vegas and then have to stay married for a year. So I'm very excited. I really hope that it's good, obviously, since this is a group book. I don't know how many people are going to end up reading it, but I hope it's really good. Also, because I am always on the hunt for really great, smutty, sapphic romances, because that's probably like the number one recommendation request I get, and I don't have that many. So if this is good, I can add another book to what I recommend, and also another author. She has a whole backlist of stuff. So yeah, I am gonna read this. I think I'm also going to make dinner. I think that the audiobook is on Scribd, so I'm gonna listen to that. I just read this part in Tangled Vows that has the exact same energy as that scene in Fleabag where the hot priest... Oh my God, what are y'all doing? Murphy! Oh. Why are you sitting like that? <laughs> this spot right here on the couch is where Loki always sits because Loki's like seven pounds. And so Murphy thinks that he can sit there too. He literally thinks that he is the same size as Loki. Okay, anyways, um, the scene that I just read, it had that same energy from Fleabag where the hot priest says kneel. If you've watched Fleabag, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is something that I didn't mention. This is a BDSM book. So the CEO woman is a dom, and then the escort is a sub, and she tells her to crawl. Like she literally just goes, crawl. Same energy, same energy as Neil. In case you can't tell, I'm loving this. <laughs> oh, Frankie. Oh my God, a rare appearance. Can you see her? A rare appearance. I cannot believe I just got her on camera. Frankie is very easily spooked, so. Oh, hi, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I wish I got that on camera. She was right behind me, and when I looked, she ran away. I love you. Nobody make any sudden movements. Sometimes she doesn't even like to be looked at. You just gotta like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I look at you? I'm sorry. Okay, so anyways, I'm gonna go back to reading Tangled Vows. So I'm taking a little break. I'm watching Outlander. I am on season two, episode three. They're in France right now. It's taken me so long even just to watch these three episodes because I don't know, it got a little bit boring. Like I loved season one and I watched that in like two days. And then once they left Scotland, I got a tiny bit bored, but my friend Kenya told me that it gets better. 
So I just need to like power through this part. But I still love this show a lot. It just kind of got a little bit uh, not as exciting for a second. But I think I'm going to use this show as like my break in between books this weekend <laughs> so that I don't get burnt out. All right, so I finished Tangled Vows by Anna Stone. I think I'm going to give it four stars out of everything that I've read so far. This had the most romance, which makes sense because it was the longest thing that I've read so far. I like the romance aspect with the fake dating, but then it also had a BDSM element to it, which I liked. I realized that while reading this, I have not read that many BDSM romances. I feel like, oh, I don't know, like other than Fifty Shades of Grey, like I can't really think of any. I, I'm sure that I've read others, but I can't think of any. Obviously, I haven't read that many, so I don't know much about like that culture. I know there's a very specific culture behind BDSM, Dom, Sub, um, arrangements and that I don't know much about, but I enjoyed it. I also just really loved how steamy it was for a sapphic book or just for any book in general. I've talked about this a lot, how sapphic books or sapphic romances tend to be more sweet than sexy. Um, and it's really hard to find good steamy sapphic romances. And this definitely checked off that box so i'm very excited to read more from this author i saw like i was looking at her backlist she has like a whole backlist of stuff um one of them is a ballet romance which i am very interested in because i just um recently binged watch tiny pretty things yeah tiny pretty things is that what it's called the new netflix show that's a ballet show so I'm definitely in the mood for like a ballet romance but she has a lot of other stuff too so I'm definitely going to need to look into her whole backlist of stuff and I'm really glad that we ended up picking this book for the group book because I liked it I'm always like nervous when we pick something because I just like I don't know if I don't end up liking it I'm gonna feel so bad that like we made everybody else read it, but I really liked this one. So I hope that everyone who read this with us also enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I don't think I'm gonna pick up anything else tonight. I think I'm gonna go to bed and then we will read some more tomorrow. Um, I don't even know what to say right now. Smutathon is over. Smutathon has been over. Christmas is over. Basically, I have not turned on my camera in over a week because <laughs> it's so stupid. I was playing with my parents' dog, Murphy, and I hit my, like, I hit my chin on his head, like, really hard. And my whole, like, jaw and mouth was swollen. It was so painful. Like, the pain, it was so bad. I felt like, like I literally felt like I'd been punched in the face. And I basically spent the rest of Smutathon all of Christmas high on pain pills. <laughs> I could not turn on the camera and talk. So yeah, Smutathon's over now. So I guess I'll talk about the two books that I read after I stopped vlogging. So I read Beautiful and Dirty by Katrina Jackson. This was for the, uh, the chatless spin of, I believe, a dark romance? Dark romance? I think it was dark. This is like a mafia novella. This was about a girl who is going on a trip with her longtime boyfriend to Italy. The whole trip is just a disaster. He's the worst. This is a trip of their lifetime. She's having the best time. She's worked so hard planning this trip and he is just complaining the whole time. She has to do everything for him. He's just like, the relationship is dead. So she goes on like a day trip to Naples, I believe. And while she's there, she goes into a restaurant and the guy who owns the restaurant is this mafia boss. The restaurant's like a front for his organization. And they're like instantly very attracted to each other. And he recently, somebody tried to kill him and he finds out that it is his wife who put the hit out on him. So him and his wife were like in a loveless marriage. It was just like a political marriage, but he never cheated on her their whole like 20 year marriage or whatever how long however long they've been married until now because she put out a hit on him and hit on him and tried to kill him so he sees this girl who's really attractive 
who was alone eating in his restaurant and they hit it off and they go into the back of the restaurant and have a great time together. I should say, I mean, obviously there's a lot of cheating involved, which normally I like am not okay with that. But if the significant others are trash cans, like if they're actual human garbage, then I don't really care. <laughs> and that was the case for this. And yeah, it was really interesting. It was definitely I, I, there, there's a second book in the series that follows the main ma mafia guy's hitman, like the person that he sends to take people out. And I, th I think that is like a longer, like a full length book. And I'm definitely interested to read that because he was a side character that was very interesting. And the way that this book ended, like set up the romance that he's going to have. And I have a feeling that the couple from this book, their romance is going to kind of continue throughout the series. Um, if this is a longer series. So yeah, I mean, I really liked it. It was a good like introduction to this mafia series and I'm excited to read the next book, which is The Hitman. And it was good. I've liked everything that I read by Katrina Jackson. So that was what I read the next morning. And then I spun again. I got recommended to me. So for this one, I read The Initiation by Nikki Sloan, which by now, if you've watched the Smutathon live show that I did, you will know. This was my favorite read of Smutathon. I gave it five stars. I have now since finished the whole trilogy, but I'll just talk about book one since that was what I read during Smutathon. So basically, I don't even know how to describe this book because it's like, it starts as one thing and then like halfway in, it turns into something totally else. The vibes that it has is like Gossip Girl. Specifically, I was talking to Lainey about this. The vibes that it has is like that plot line in Gossip Girl. Sorry, I'm about to spoil a little bit of Gossip Girl. Um, but that plot line in Gossip Girl where Chuck trades Blair to his uncle for the, the hotel or the company, that's basically the vibes of this book. So essentially we have this big like finance, I think it's a finance company. It's about like the, the, the head of that company, the board members of that company. There's this board and there's this secret initiation that happens whenever a new person joins the board. All anybody knows about this initiation is that when a new person joins the board, in order to join the board, they have to either get married or be married and their wife or the person that they're going to marry has to join in on this initiation and that's all anybody knows so the main character her sister is like the perfect sister and she's kind of like the one that nobody cares about or the one that everybody overlooks and her sister has uh, been like betrothed or is going to marry the head of the company's son who is about to join the board. So she is about to go through this initiation. But then plot twist, everyone finds out she's pregnant with somebody else so she can no longer marry him and join this whole like weird thing that's going on. So instead they decide the main character she's gonna be the one to marry him. And so it's kind of got a little bit of like enemies to lovers vibes because he sort of like bullied her in the past. Not like bully bullied her, but he made her life in their like social circles more difficult than it had to be. So she doesn't like him at first. <laughs> so yeah, they start up a romance. And so the first half of this book is like, they're in the early stages of planning their uh, their wedding together, their life, their engagement, they're starting a romance together, and she is preparing for this initiation, which again, all she knows is that she has to go into the boardroom with all the members of the board, who's like nine, I think it's like nine men. They're gonna like quiz her or something. Like that's what she knows is gonna happen. So then halfway through the book, when we get to the initiation and find out what it actually is, I listen to this on audio and normally when I listen to, to audiobooks I have like a game on my phone that I play that's just like a mindless game. I had to stop playing my game and just sit there and listen. I literally stopped breathing. I was like, oh my god. That's all I'm gonna say honestly because oh, this book was so so good. The, the directions that it took in the second half of the book like immaculate everything that I wanted and especially the way that it ended like I had to immediately start the next book so yeah I loved this I gave it five stars I highly recommend it I feel like this would be a really good introduction into dark romance because I I don't know that I would consider it dark romance but it has a lot of dark romance vibes without actually being 
dark romance. Like, it's still lighter, but, like, it goes there. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. It was so fucking good. Like, oh my god, it was so good. And literally, like, for the past week, I've been wanting to finish this vlog just so that I could talk about this book. Like I said, I've now finished the whole trilogy. There is a fourth book that is following, like, the villain from the trilogy, which I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to because shocker he was my favorite character <laughs> i recommend it so much best thing i read for smutathon so yeah that is going to be the end of my vlog i'm really happy with how smutathon went this round literally everything that i read i enjoyed there wasn't one book that i read that i didn't like which never happens <laughs> and other than like busting my face on my dog i had a great time <laughs> So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!